is welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper right Corner. We have Monk starting as the mustard colored Protoss. Bottom right hand corner, we have Fisheye starting as the black Protoss. I'm just going to take it in fun faith. Oh man, look at this. Immediate probe move out for Proxy Gateway. Usually you see Proxy Gateway versus Terran on Butter, but Monk looks like he wants to go for the Proxy Gateway versus Protoss. Try to catch his opponent off guard. I was about to say, and I even had the, the phone pause right there. The good old phone pause to evaluate. Does it know it? I was going to say Butter is one of those maps where it is 2v2, so it makes it a little bit harder to execute cheese, but Monk might pull it off. He, I mean, he's one game away from victory here. So if he's able to sneak this and keep this, uh, this probe in the shadows thus far, we're going to go to Fisheye View. Nope, he's just walking it straight in. I guess he wants the Manor Pylon, or maybe he wants to just go for straight up Pylon interior to base here and go for a gateway gateway versus gateway engagement feeling that he has better micromanagement and that is quite the statement versus fisheye so first pylon going interior to base fisheye is going to have the much earlier gateway this isn't a manor pylon and it's not really disrupting the mineral production at all this is a best of five so forge being dropped i guess he want, he's thinking about going for a cannon play but Fisheye is going to know how to combat this pretty readily. And he's already got a probe snuck in, engaging the probe, forcing a cancellation. Yeah, this is just wasted resources. And that might be game right there. So the Forge and Pylon have warped in. But look at all this travel time that Monk is now going to need in order to just get a unit down here. And a Zealot's already produced, being produced in base. Yeah, that was a huge... First of all, I want to call it like a s smidge of disrespect, but a huge botch right there. Second pylon being built to maybe do a follow-up nexus. Weird play overall. So first sell it going to be out. It's marching towards the opponent base. Is going to find the probe making its way in. Is he even going to bother engaging it? No, he's just going to march straight. Yeah, cannon needed on the front. Maybe to force some cannons out. So defensive cannons on the front, I guess. Fisheye already up three workers. Already positioned with a counter probe. That looks like, yeah, it's already going to get first hit. And this is just going to be one worker to one worker. Not even that much of a, a bother for him, to be honest. So the Zealot going to be able to wander up here to find the photon cannon warping in. The pi oh. So an attempted cannon... With the pylon, but the probes already move through. Fisheye easily dispatching it. Probes blockading the zealot on the way across, so at least getting some disruption there. But that's still three probes off the line. So that was a lot of workers not mining. This is a lot of workers not mining in between. And this is in the early stages of the match. A second cannon getting dropped. But Fisheye already saving. Okay, he's dropping a second gateway. Honestly, I would just go straight to Nexus, knowing that you're in a position where your opponent cannot engage you at all so first pilot that that will unpower the forge assimilator follow-up and i don't know what options monk had. i mean he's done a pretty good job macroing keep the probe count somewhat close but that was a lot of lost resources right there he's going to be down two gateways cybernetic score morphing and i'm wondering if fisheye is just going to he just wants to uh build dragoons and go for the straight kill here with range so that forge gonna get wiped out at the very least it's providing a bit of scouting information a gateway being built on monk's side of the map is saving up to grab a nexus behind those two cannons i'm actually a little bit surprised he went for gateway first rather than going for the nexus first as he's already got the two cannons in position and that was kind of his one play to go for some economic equilibrium the other option is of course dt he's got two gateways here we'll see what the follow-up play is but yeah you can just see that we already have like a 10 supply difference between monk and fisheye at the very early stages the dragoons can test that front and they'll just 
turn around immediately. And it looks like I'm wondering if this is actually going to be a four gate follow up. Yeah. One base four gate. The Dragoon might want and look, look at this. Yeah. Already recognizing who he's up against, checking all of the exterior expansions. If he goes, if Fisheye goes Observer Weaver, he'll be fine. If he doesn't confirm the lack of Nexus, however, at the natural, this could end up working out in Monk's favor because this is, it's an all-in build, but you can build a lot of troops rather rapidly. He does have quite a supply deficit to try to make up though. And again, as long as it's Robo into Reaver, it will negate pretty much the vast majority of what Monk can toss. Another pylon towards the front. Kind of interesting positioning. Maybe worried about a counter follow-up all in. He's upgrading range as well. We'll have to see how it plays out. But the thing is, is it is possible for Monk off the four gates to equalize the troop count. Just because you're producing at twice the capacity. Dragoons pressing forward. Only three Dragoons being left on the front. Some Dragoons down right there. And Fisheye actually might be able to bust this before it's even an issue. Through the superior numbers he has right this second. Shield battery late. Not in position to really be a factor here. And seeing this number of Dragoons, Fisheye has to know that it's a four gate. He has to know from the lack of Nexus that it's a four gate follow-up. So let's see if he goes Robo first. So he's dropped his Nexus. Continuing to produce troops on the front. I want to see the Robo. No, Observatory first. Ah, shoot, Fisheye, come on. Recognize the Dragoon count. Now I'm a little bit nervous and I'm unabashedly rooting a little bit for Fisheye just because it would be, that would be a terrible way to drop in the finals here. But you have to recognize that the even count, that it's not just two gate play with the differential and workers. So drawing back, a lot of damage, so that's even a larger space. There's a robotic support bay. There are opportunities, as long as the shield battery is dropped on the opposite side from Fisheye, or even if there's a probe pull, he can pull a full 10 probes and lose them and still be in a superior economic position because he can just redrop that Nexus. I'm also curious at what count Monk is going to feel comfortable enough to start pushing troops out because now it's a race for him versus this reaver because as soon as that reaver is out in the field that could be that could be it another probe sneaking out just wanting to check out these additional locations monk trying in case there is an observer out which there is making its way up angling his dragoons along that far edge to give as little forewarning as possible that probe might not see the dragoons as they're cycling their way out the Reaver's going to be finished, but it's going to be a crawl. Oh, was that spotted? Looks like not. Okay, now some Dragoons pushing up. That should be a big alert to Fisheye. No shield battery as of yet. He's actually a bit outnumbered. He does need to... Okay, the Reaver crawling its way, so protecting that Reaver will be essential. Pylon blockade at the 9 o'clock, which is valuable. Probe making its way forward to kind of test... Monk testing the defenses here. So what are we looking at? That Reaver will be the difference. Probe making its way forward to try to absorb some initial shots. Monk pushing in, immediately backing right back out. The longer he waits, the more Reavers will now be in the engagement, however. The Observer going to walk in and confirm the foregate. Natural expansion humming. Fisheye's economy is incredible. So all he has to do is make sure that there wasn't a sneaky expansion grab. And it doesn't matter how many... Dragoons are produced through the long haul. Fisheye is going to be able to drop. He's already got four gateways up and running. He's going to be able to equalize that dragoon, that uh, troop count. You cannot produce anything more off the four gate. An attempt at robotics facility here. The other advantage for Fisheye is if he wants to go ahead and get a shuttle out in the air, he could grab a shuttle, grab a few zealots, and go for a back end hit. I would just honestly put this observer on some sort of patrol motion across all of the additional expansions to make sure that Monk isn't sneaking something additional. Might want to walk out. This is a huge slew of Dragoon. And think about that investment as well. So Fisheye, in a strong position, it's his game to lose. I mean, it was his game to lose for 
a large portion of this. Citadel of a Dune plopped down, getting Zealot leg speed. He's got five gateways now, which will put him at an overall production advantage over that four gate play. A salute, a double robotics facility now for Monk. This will be some interesting play. To maybe try to catch up in the overall Reaver count. I don't know what that, what the plan is. He's going to have to pause things all the way. He's, he's so all in. More gateways being dropped for Fisheye. Yeah, getting that shuttle out. Recog I mean, at least Monk recognizes the situation where grabbing additional expansion at this stage would be folly. He's got to win it on some sort of break. So shuttle moving out. Maybe he was hoping to ferry troops across. But even attempting to ferry troops across, he's going to be outnumbered just with general reinforcements. Let's see if he tries to scoop up four zealots and get into Fisheye's main. Templar Archives, Forge, warping in as well. I don't know that there is... And that's the other trick of this, is with that Forge being down, there's no uh, plus one weapons option for Monk either. I'm actually a little bit shocked that Monk hasn't drifted to DT. A couple of additional observers out just to make absolute sure. So Reaver's in the shuttle. Now Fisheye thinking about wandering out. Actually, if he engages at this gap, despite being down, I think in Raw Dragoons, potentially. Yeah, I think he's still down in Raw Dragoons. He'll be okay, though. I mean, the Zealot leg speed will be the difference. Force a pushback. That will help protect the Reavers. Fisheye would have to completely botch this engagement and get got completely by surprise, and I don't think that's going to happen, especially with this action right here. So Fisheye wandering out, finds the army, the Zealot starting to engage. Monk now in full retreat. He is moving with double shuttle with eight Zealots across. But even in a base race situation, which eight Zealots versus reinforcements out of the gateway and everything else, I don't think that's going to cut it. A Reaver moving up. But Fisheye swarming this attack force. Reaver is still not part of the fight, however. Now dropping the Reavers. Zealots dropped in the main. So Monk getting kind of that after sniff. The re two Reavers still active, and the Zealots also just looking to break that gap. If the Zealots just position force for, first for Fisheye, he'll be fine. The worker count is actually surprisingly even after all of this. They're finally transferring to that natural. Let's see if the Zealots engage the natural there. Probes have been pulled off the line, though, for Monk. He is still mining, but barely. The Reaver is trying to push the gap with this attack force. Still two bases versus... Actually, maybe not going to be two bases. The Zealots moving in. They're going to focus fire that Nexus down. Putting Fisheye down to one base. But I don't think it matters because there's still a, a pure 50 supply lead right now. And a lot of that 50 supply is on Monk's doorstep. Walking in now... Three shuttles that are empty, and that's a good portion of supply that doesn't really mean anything as well. And plus one weapons is going to complete in not too long from now. So Monk honestly should GG at this stage, but we know Monk. He's going to hold out to the last second. The Reaver backing up, wanting to engage Zealots as best it can. A Reaver spawning, going to die before it's even able to build a Scarab. The worker count continuing to plummet. Three shuttles. Now it's almost like a peekaboo game, a shell game, with with the Reaver being in which shuttle. Probes fleeing for their lives. And Monk's still not GGing. At this stage, I'm going to say that, it, yeah, it's just the, the finals, and that's okay. Probes evacuating. They have Zealots in tow. Monk is no longer mining where Fisheye is. I got to give it to Monk that shuttle still has a Reaver in it. Still has a Reaver. No Zealots have been pulled off. Is this just going to be distance mining? The probes, yeah, now trying to work. At least they were able to pull some units out. But this is just a cleanup operation now for Fisheye. Granted, the Zealots don't trade very well against the Reaver, but I don't think it matters. And Reaver's dying before they're even able to engage that shuttle. So yeah, additional Zealots just marching in. Monk without resources remaining. 
I think Fisheye went with Zealots here not because they're effective against what's present. It's just they're rapid. They're just faster at killing what's there. Finally, a GG for Monk. And with that, Fisheye advances to the final. I do like the manor at the end there from Monk. Well-deserved win from Fisheye. Made it to the finals. And I'm happy I predicted that sometime down the line. And he will face the winner of the next match where I can't, for the life of me, I cannot remember the two players off the top of my head. I think Doodle's one of them. I'm wondering if Doodle will be the one to advance. Doodle and I can't remember who else. But a formidable So? So and Doodle? Anyway, I feel like I just, uh, that, that was already played though previously. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Please give a like, a subscribe, share with a friend. I appreciate your viewership as, uh, as always. Thank you for listening.